when Iblis, Shaitan, when he was expelled from Jannah while leaving the paradise, he said one thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that thing was that Wala Tajidu Aksarahum Shakirin. He said, Wala Tajidu Aksarahum Shakirin. That I'm leaving this paradise because you are expelling me. But I'm going to do my best to make sure that most of the people, Aksarahum, most of the people remain ungrateful to you. Again, wala tajidu aksarahum shakirin. I will do my best to make sure that most of the people, aksarahum, shakirin, are not thankful to you. Right? So, in reply, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Shaitan that, inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. That, listen. My true servants, I'll make sure that you have no power over my true servants, except those who want to follow you. Those who want to follow you, then they will be ungrateful to me. But in the ibadi, but my true servants. Laysa laka alayhim sultan. You will have no power over them whatsoever. Illa manit taba'aka minal ghaveen. Except for those people who knowingly, deliberately, with their own choice, would like to follow you. Then those will be ungrateful to me. Right? Because of this conversation between shaitan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran that, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ hisab. The meaning of that is that those people who thank me in good times and in tough times, those are sabirin. Again, sabirin are who? who thank Allah in good times and in bad and in bad times so Allah is saying I will enter them into Jannah without even opening their book of deeds Bighayri Hisab means that without opening their book of deeds Allah will say that this particular person he thanked me in good times and in bad times so now I'm going to exempt him from Hisab. So his book will not be opened. Let him go to paradise without a single question being asked to him. This is why, because this person thanked me in good times and in tough times. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further said to the statement from shaitan right now then you dig in more into quran and you will find that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran is teaching us reminding us that if you want to be my slaves then always thank me always thank me once you stop thanking me you are out from being my favorites and you are close to the disciples of shaitan now my dear brothers and sisters again i will repeat centuries old request and that is learn quran Learn Quran. Don't just do tilawat of Quran, but learn Quran. The most beautiful book on the earth is Quran. 
the most truthful book on this earth is Quran. Alif Lam Mim Dalika Al Kitab. Allah said, this is the real book. Dalik Al Kitab. Alif Lam. Al Kitab. Not Dalika Kitab. Dalika Al Kitab. This is the real book. Meaning, in the whole world, zillions of books, among them, one book is Al Kitab. And that is Alif Lam Mim Dalika Al Kitab. Most authentic, free from doubts, free from any mistake, guaranteed that you understand this book, your heart will be illuminated with the Noor of Quran. Right? Uh, Uh, yeah, afaman sharah Allah. Look at this illumination of heart. How your heart is illuminated with the nur of Quran. Once you start understanding, afaman afaman sharah Allah sadrahu lil Islam fahuwa ala nur min Rabbi. If your heart is open for Islam for Quran, Allah is saying, I will Im, uh, illuminate your heart with the nur of Quran, brothers. And sister, this nur of Quran will come with when you understand, not just with, with tilawat of Quran. Inshallah, you will get benefits of tilawat of Quran, right? But the nur of Quran is sharah Allah. Sharah means when Allah opens your heart, right? So Allah opens your heart, now you are understanding Quran, right? I ask you this question, brothers. Who is the mutakallim? Who is the speaker here? Mutakallim. Allah, right? Allah is mutakallim. His kalam, speech is Quran. He is talking to us. And we are saying, uh, we are not interested. Allah, but think. Allah, we are not interested in Understanding what you are saying, Allah. No. We, we have zero interest in that. How would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love you? Imagine I'm talking to you right now, and you come right on, on my face and say, Havisab, I'm not interested in whatever you are saying. Just be quiet. Would I like that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the mutakallim. Allah is speaking. And we are saying, Allah, we are not interested in that whatsoever. So when you are doing tilawat of Quran, you get benefits. Fine. But those are side benefits. Real benefit is tadabbur fil fil Quran. So Allah is saying, sharah Allahu sadrahu. Lil Islam fahuwa ala nurim mir, mir Rabbi. Then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the heart, then that person's heart is illuminated with the nur. Right? Therefore Allah asked, I think two or three questions in Quran. Allah said, Hal yastabil a'ma wal basir? Am hal tastabil zulumat wal nur? Am ja'alu lillahi shuwaka a khalaqu ka khalqi? فَتَشَابَ الْخَلْقُ عَلَيْهِمْ قُلِ اللَّهُ خَالِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, do you think that a person who has knowledge of Qur'an, who had spent years learning Qur'an, can that person be equal in rank to Allah with that person who never cared about Qur'an? He doesn't know nothing about Qur'an except for reading. So can these two be, pe people be equal? Second question in Quran. Kul hal yastabil a'ma wal basir. Can a person who can see, right? When he is walking, a person who can see, when he's walking, no, no need to, 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 for you to uh, be told that this person has eyes. He will walk confidently. Why? Because he can see the road. On the other, a'ma, a blind person. 
when he is walking with a stick anybody can see from the even behind behind this blind person that this person is not sure when when he's walking so the thing can a person with eyes be equal to the person who is blind meaning if you don't know quran you are blind you are blind you know quran you try to understand quran you are like a person who is walking on the path of life with confidence so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brother wants us to learn quran anyhow so coming back to the point about shukr what i was trying to tell you brother in quran what we find is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching you and me as if like a teacher is teaching small kindergarten students i mean look at this how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is counting his blessings to us so that we can realize those blessings and then we sh do sugar to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right for example four ayahs here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing arabs of medina and makkah remember all that they had around them was what desert right they had uh, animals especially camel they have these huge uh, mountains standing there for centuries and during the night what they do is that when they see the sky the arabian sky is always or most of the time always clear with uh, stars twinkling right so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the same arabs who are the first receivers of quran right allah is saying with so much compassion and love allah saying afala yanzuruna ila al ibli kayfa khuliqat allah saying don't you see how a camel is created subhanallah brothers camel is is like the, the ship of the desert safinatul bar imagine if elephants were there instead of camels an elephant were unfit for arabian life camels are fit in they fit in with the desert life so allah is saying afala yanzuruna ila al ibl don't you see how camels are created now people in arabia knew this ayah better than you and i who have never ridden on a camel except for fun sometime you and i are used to of driving automobiles so to you and and me it will be afala yanzuruna ila al sayyara kayfa khuliqat cars how, how they are created so afala yanzuruna ila al ibl kayfa khuliqat then other way ila sama kayfa rufiat look at the sky how it is being raised now brothers and sisters <coughs> sky is standing bighair amadin tarawna without a pillar without a pillar this huge roof this ceiling above our, our head is standing there without any pillar and how this sky is changing its colors during sunset time you see how many colors appear right and when in the the morning how in allah faliqul habbi wa yukhriju faliqul isbah allah look how when there is complete pitch darkness and one ball the sun comes out from a distance right and is that sun sheds the <coughs> darkness and the color changes from darkness to pitch bright 
So they're saying, you look at the sky. Now everybody will look at the sky based on their knowledge. A Bedouin in Arabia will look at the sky with his own experience and knowledge. Now a NASA scientist right, will look at the sky with his knowledge. Right? But both of them should reach the same con uh, uh, conclusion and that is Subhanallah. The conclusion should be the same. Allahu khaliqu kulli shay. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa ila al jibal, kaifa nusibat. And how the mountains are placed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that I have placed these mountains with great hikmat and wisdom. These mountains are making sure that the balance of the earth is, is still. Allah said, if these mountains were not there, the earth would have tilt one way. Right? And then, And don't they see the earth, how this earth is level? Right? You can walk on the earth, you can build buildings on the earth, and this earth produces vegetables, fruits. This earth gives us water. And then when we die, this earth takes our body in itself. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fadhakkir. Fadhakkir. Innama anta mudhakkir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O Muhammad sallam, remind them about what I am teaching them in Quran. Innama anta mudakkir, you can only teach them. Lasta alayhim bi musaytir. You are not the enforcer. You cannot compel or force a person to believe in, in, in a certain thing. Innama anta mudakkir, you are there to remind people. Right? Let me tell you a story about the sun as we are talking about, right? I met a brother here in Orlando and I had the good fortune of doing Hajj with him few few years ago. He lives here in Florida and he must be 20 years older to me. So we made, we became friends. Mashallah, he goes to the masjid on a regular basis, pray five salah, goes for Hajj and Umrah and the place where he lives, Mashallah, he is doing lots of service to his masjid. So, I met him in Medina Munawwara. Right? On during the Hajj. Then, Alhamdulillah, we were together. So, he said, Imam, let's go for dinner. I said, okay, let's go. So, after a day, a certain Isha Salah in Medina Munawwara, him and I, with our families, went to a restaurant and we were talking. Now, brother, he shared many stories of his life, but one story really sticks out, and I'd like to share this. He said, Imam, when I was, he was from Pakistan, he said, when I was in, living in Pakistan some 40 years ago, I was living in a small village. My parents were very religious. <coughs> and there was a masjid next to my home. So since my childhood, I was so much attached to my local masjid that I used to wash the floor of the masjid nearly every day. And I would call azan at my masjid for many, many salah. So I was very much attached to my masjid. And I was, mashallah, a good Muslim at that time. He said, I got my green cards because my brother was here. He sponsored me. I came to US in the 60s. He said, when I came here, I saw a different world. You know, I saw different kind of sins openly taking place here, which I have never even thought of. He said, when I came here and I saw all that, gradually, gradually, I drifted away from Islam to a point that I stopped going to for Juma, 
then for five times Salah, then even Ramadan. He said, then I made some friends who were atheists. <coughs> so I would talk to them and they convinced me that there's no God. I, left, I spent many years of my life living as an atheist. Then he said, there were many ups and downs in my life. Now, brother, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give hidayah to a person anywhere. <laughs> he was saying, Hafiz sahab, I got hidayah. I came back to Islam because the, of the time that, is sp <laughs> that I spent on Daytona Beach. <laughs> what are you saying? He said, I, I bought a condominium in Daytona Beach. So I took my wife and kids one day, but I was very restless from inside, right? You know, I was very restless. And something in my heart was telling me that, you know, I'm missing my old life. He said, remember, I was an atheist, right? He said, one day, my wife and my kids were sleeping in that condominium, and I'm in, in the Tuna Beach, right? He said, it was around 4 o'clock in the morning, right? I got up and uh, there was no question of me praying Salah because I didn't believe in God at that time. He said, I was so restless that I opened the door and I walked out. And I kept walking towards the sea, towards the ocean, right? I reached the beach, it was pitch dark, pitch dark. All I can hear was the sound of waves coming and going, but it was so dark I could not even see the water. There was no uh, moon out there. So I was just sitting on the beach alone. Nobody there. And I was just listening to the voice of the waves coming and going. And he said, I was watching the darkness out there as far as my eyes can go. Right? He said, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and I'm sitting there watching. He said, for two, three hours, I have been just watching that darkness over the ocean. He said, then what happened was, gradually, gradually, away, far away, behind the water of the ocean, right? From far away, this huge ball, sun, started emerging. He said, now I'm seeing that the darkness is vanishing gradually. And this huge sun is coming out. And since I have been witnessing this darkness for a few hours, I saw that as the sun was coming out, the darkness was disappearing. And in few minutes, the sun was blazing out there, and there was no trace of darkness whatsoever. He said that awe of that, of that sun, that feeling <coughs> of witnessing the sun coming out. He said that feeling was a strong feeling. It just made me think, who brings this sun out? I mean, who can bring this sun out? Who can make this thing happen every day? He said, sitting on the beach, I, I broke down. He said, I broke down and I cried like a baby. He said, people were jogging at that time and I was sitting there crying like a baby on the, on the ocean, on the beach. He said, I was thinking that this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing. And how foolish am I that I reject the existence of, of God. And I have, I have been rejecting the existence of God for so many years. I ruined my years of life. He said, Imam, I stood up while still crying. I came home into my apartment and I was crying. My wife said, what happened to you? My small children were like, dad, what happened? Somebody hit you? Somebody cursed you? What? And he said, Hafsa, from that time onwards, I made a U-turn in my life. Now, I see Allah everywhere. I see Allah in the leaves. 
everywhere. When the sand shines, I see the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there. Remember that ayah? Inna Allah faliqul habbi wa nawa. Faliqul isbah. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the same thing in the Quran, but you and I have to read and understand. Allah said, Faliqul isbah. Allah is the one who brings the subh, the morning. And <coughs> we need so many tube lights and bulbs to illuminate a small building. Allah takes out just one bulb, the sun. One tube light, the sun. And that illuminates the whole universe. Right? So, Quran, brothers and sisters, is teaching us to think, to learn. So, the ayah that I recited to you in the beginning regarding shukr, please, my dear brothers and sisters, remember this ayah, contemplate, think. Second last ayah of Suratul Kaf. Please pay attention, and I'm going to conclude here. Second last ayah of Suratul Kaf. Which one is that, brothers? Second last ayah. So, you can go home and check. I'll recite again. قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا Midad means ink. قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ غَبِّي لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتِ Kalimat means the signs of Allah's greatness. كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا Allah said, Allah is just giving an example about how great Allah is. I think if the ocean would turn into ink, midad, and you use that, that ink, right, to write about the kalimatu rabbi, you start writing about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is saying, I'm telling you, lana fidal bahr. The sea will finish, meaning that ink will finish, right? Before the greatness about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the talk about the greatness of Allah could finish. Even if I will give you another ocean full of ink, another ocean full of ink, still you will not be able to describe the greatness of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second last ayah of Suratul Kahf. You must have read Suratul Kahf, right? Today's Juma. Brothers and sisters, think about it. Think about it. Look, brothers and sisters, just like you, I also have come in this world. But anytime I leave, somebody will replace me. Yes. Yeah. You have come in this world, you will leave, somebody will replace you. But the talk about the greatness of Allah will continue. Before I came, people were talking about the greatness of Allah. When I will leave this world, people will continue to talk about the greatness of Allah. Brothers and sisters, let's talk about the greatness of Allah as long as we are alive. Keep on talking about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is shukr. That is shukr. Whenever you say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, hasbi Allah, that is shukr. You are accepting that Allah is the greatest. Once you are doing shurk, shukr, brothers and sisters, bighayri hisab, Quran is saying your book of deeds will not be open on the day of judgment. You will have easy passage to paradise. And let me repeat the definition of sabr again. <coughs> sabr is what? When you thank Allah during tough times and in good times. Then, then you are sabirin. Do sugar to Allah. But brothers, read Quran. Quran is introducing Allah to us. Right? If, if you want introduction of Allah, read Quran. When you read Quran, your heart would be filled with the greatness of Allah. And the more you have the greatness of Allah in your heart, the more you lose sugar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make you and me amongst, amongst shakirin. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallah wa bihamdi.